Christine Horn. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Sunday Stories. Oh man, I figured it was time since I laid the foundation of, you know, where I'm from and how I started uh, acting. It was time to share some some good fun audition stories. And when I say that, I mean fun as in good, some as in horrible, but funny thinking about it now. So <laughs> I figured I would start with my Stomp the Yard story. If you're not subscribed to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and hit the notification button, hit the little bell so you can get notified when I post a new video. Um, and by the way, um, I have a show on Tuesdays, especially for actors, called Actors Daily Bread every Tuesday night at 8. And on Thursdays, I have my vlog, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. So check that out too. But okay, so let's get into it. So I was thinking, I was doing a brain dump and I was like, what stories, like what do I wanna share? And what came up for me was, I was like my first blockbuster feature film. Now keep in mind, I have booked prior to Stump the Yard, which came out in 2007, starring Megan Good, Columbus Short. Prior to that, I had booked some other feature films, but got cut out of them. Um, most notably, um, the one before Stump the Yard, it was a movie called Stay Alive. I played the wife to Wendell Pierce, who you know from uh, Treme and Wait and Exhale, you know Wendell Pierce. And I played his wife and is shot in New Orleans right before Katrina hit and had a great time shooting, had a great time working with him and him showing me around the town because he was from New Orleans. And it was an amazing experience that never made it to screen. So I stomped the yard is special to me because it made it to screen. And even though my role was, and right now you're probably like, that's you? That's you? That's your first time the yard? Yes. <laughs> but it's special because it was the first one that made it to the big screen and not only that it was extremely popular and it was really an honor to be a part of but let's go back to the audition story so there I am working at my day job <laughs> you know and this was one of those last minute auditions if, if you're not in the industry we don't always have weeks and months to prepare for a role and especially some of these smaller roles it was like clearly they wrote this character in last minute or it was a recast i don't know but i was at work and let's just say it was like i want to say like maybe 1 or 2 p.m in the afternoon and i get an, an email audition from uh, my agent and it's like audition this afternoon Shay Griffin, who's a huge casting director in, in, in Georgia, um, especially at the time. Shay Griffin, you gotta be at her office in, in Buckhead um, by, I don't even remember. Let's just say it was four o'clock. It was like no notice. I'm at work like, how am I gonna get out of this job? And it was like, the, I looked at the character description and it described the character as this kind of intimidating butch <laughs> basketball player who gets in like this fisticuff you know with Columbus Short's character and I'm like oh my god like I have no time to go home because I already worked in Midtown at the time for those of you in Atlanta like Howell Mill Road Marietta Street Marietta Boulevard area and I was like I have no time to go home. what am I gonna do and like what is in my car because what I did know is how am I how am I gonna look like a basketball player I'm in my day my day job clothes like you know polyester shirt and skirt and heels and I don't even know what my hair, I think my hair, I think I had crochet braids, some kind of curly situation at the time. But I was like panicking, I was like, what? So I sneak out from my desk at work and go to my trunk to see what do I have in my trunk. When I tell you, thank God, I was going to the gym pretty regularly at that point. And I managed, I had like some comfy, not even like the yoga fitted pants. I had like some kind of loose, wide-legged, hang out on your couch pants in the trunk and i happened to have a bra top it was and i never forget it was a champion sports bra i would usually wear that under whatever t-shirt i was gonna wear at the gym just to keep the girls down and i was like i guess it's gonna be that i ain't had no sneakers <laughs> anyway so i ended up getting like <coughs> a little sick 
at work and I had to leave early. And so I left early, go to this audition. You know, right when I get to the building, I run into the bathroom, put on my little champion bra top. At least back then I had a little ab situation going on. I put on the little comfy pants and my heels. <laughs> Cause I didn't have no sneakers. And I'm like, this is just gonna be what it's gonna be. I walk in that, that lobby y'all. It is filled with six foot plus female basketball players. I was like, why did they call me in for this? They clearly are looking for a female basketball player. I was like, oh my God, like, and I'm like, and this is the lesson, especially for my actors out there. Like, I was like, well, I'm here. So I was like, what can I do to channel <laughs> this energy of these tall ass uh, female basketball players who look intimidating to me? <laughs> I'm five nine, even with my little heels on, but still, you know the difference. Okay, WNBA up in there, and I'm just like, uh. So anyway, it's my turn to go in and I'm just like channeling my inner, because remember this character is supposed to be in the script. She's supposed to be, they were like intimidating. They perp, I remember it saying intimidating lesbian or like something like butch. It was very much alluding to, she had to be like, you know, just this aggressive kind of thing. So I just did my best. I just kind of walked in the room, like, try to take up as much space as I can. Yeah, I was like, at least I got my bra top on. They can see my arm, my arm structure, and you know, my abs. And I did the whole scene, right? And I was very still and very stoic, reading with Shay Griffin, you know? And I was like, you gotta wait in line. And I dropped my voice. Like, I forget what my lines are even right now. Like, uh, you gotta wait in line just like everybody else, right? Nah, and I was just like, no. <laughs> trying to channel I was trying to channel my six foot four WNBA vibes what happened was after I got done the casting director was like oh she had this like look of relief like oh that was so good I think the next day I found out I booked the role I share this story with you because when the script came in I found out I booked the role I was freaking stoked but then when I got the script, they changed the description of the character. So it no longer said lesbian or, or butch. Again, I can't remember which one it said, but it definitely was alluding to she was a lady lover. Let's be clear. Because that was like, a whole, you know, and it definitely alluded that she was a basketball player. But by the time the script came back around, they just tweaked the description and just put like intimidating woman in line. And I never forgot that moment because what I had to remember was sometimes casting thinks, not even casting, the production in the script when it's being written, they see something very specific. But then I realized it was a room full of these basketball players who, guess what, were basketball players. They weren't actors. And though I was not one, even the fact that I had on the heels <laughs> which were not on the camera, by the way. So only the casting director saw that because the frame was here. I walked in with this energy and this, and this aura and this, and this vibe of taking up the space and being as intimidating as I could be, which still worked. And it just solidified, just keep doing what you know to do. And when I got to set, I was so excited. I was so excited, you know, and less excited about Columbus Short because I didn't really know him then. Of course, we all knew him after. But just to be on set, to be the one that wasn't a background actor, because you know I've done my share of background acting back in the day just to see what it was like. And to be there and to be waiting in my little chair and it's my chair, Columbus chair, Megan Good's chair, and Megan Good's just sitting there on her. Back then they had them phones that flipped up. It wasn't a flip phone, it was like, it slid up, I forget what they're called. S Skyway pager, two way, I don't know. But it was like fancy and you could like do stuff and be on the internet. And I remember thinking, oh, one day 
I'm a happy one of them phones that flip up. I'ma be on the internet too. I'ma when I'm in between my scenes, I'ma have something to do too. Like I remember being just so like, not weird about it. Cause I had some other friends in the movie. I had so many friends. So many of my friends were in Stomp the Yard. And so, but none of, none, none of my friends were there that day. But getting to see the movie when it came out, it was like, oh, there goes Sal, oh, there goes Dwayne, there goes Juanita. Like, it was just all these people I knew and I just felt so honored to be in there. And when we were getting ready to shoot, it was this big scene, if you remember. Um, I'm not gonna post the clip because I don't want my video to get flagged, but I will post the picture. Um, but it was like, I told people, it was like, it was like, yeah, it was like eight hours of pushing Columbus short around. Such a hard day. <laughs> and Columbus was like, yo, just push me. Just, yeah, just, you know, don't, don't be, don't be gentle. Just push me, just push me. And the, what's here, what's funny guys, which you never saw because they never showed my feet because they really wanted to make sure I looked taller than him. I ended up having on wedges, wedge heels. <laughs> So the whole thing of me wearing heels at the audition with the comfy pants, honey, I ended up in heels anyway. Oh man, and he was super cool. Again, this was before Scandal, before his scandals, you know, he would be in the, by the trailer pop locking, you know, like just practicing. And it was really just the energy was so good. And I felt so honored to be in that scene. And for it to be such a, a small, quick scene, I get, more people come up to me now and be like, were you in Stomp the Yard? Like more than some other things that I've done that have been like full episodes. So that is my Stomp the Yard story. My lessons are, you know, just stay true to, stay ready. You know, this was back, back in the day, but even now, keep clothes in your car. For my actors out there, keep changes of clothes in your car. You never know what <laughs> is gonna come at you and you're not gonna have time to go home and change. Um, but also, don't be intimidated by what you see in the waiting room because you don't know what they're looking for and you might be the thing they're searching for and don't even know that they want. And that's what happened to me. And uh, it was just, a, it was a fun, funny story, but looking at my career now and my life now like like yeah i'm i get to sit in my chair on on different sets and you know i have my phone that gets to go on the internet you know and i like to crochet when i'm waiting i like to read you know like to see how far i've come and i still keep a humility and i still keep a focus because i want to do my best work um and I'm still try to, I still try to be as gracious as I can to up and coming actors that I see on set. There's so many actors who I've met on set, either who were my stand-in or um, who were just around. And I'll talk to them and I'll say, hey, join up my Facebook group, Hollywood Bound Actors. Like, come, yeah, come on. You're like, and it's just like, because I know like somebody has to lift you up. Somebody has to give you just one extra little nugget and not just be like, no, I can't talk to you right now. Now, if I'm doing a dramatic scene and I'm crying, that's one thing. But if I'm chilling, if I see you at Crafty, like I wanna speak and pour some, some life into you because many people did it for me. And those who didn't, I took note of that too. And I vowed that I would not be that way. So thank you for tuning in. Be sure to come back next week. I have another uh, fun audition story for you. I'm not gonna tell you for what show though yet. You have to come back and see. I'll see you next time. Um, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Bye.